Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our live Trending Thursday. My name is Glenn Tompkins, Senior Instructor here. Glad to be back after I was in Guatemala all last week. But we did have a great presentation by David Paul. Dr. David Paul was here. Well, a video was him uh, of him was here last week. And um, if you can hear me, let me know uh, by... Uh, in, in affirmation, in affirmation, is that a good word? That's a good word. Uh, let me know you can hear me in, in the chat, preferably with VV Nation, to make sure that I am coming across loud and clear because my producer, Joey, sitting side saddle to me is the guy that makes sure that everything is happening the right way. Say hi, Joey. Hi, Joey. There he is. I missed him. I missed all of you guys as well. Um, so, como estas? Jay, stop typing Spanish in the room. Stop typing Spanish in the room. OMG. I I hear you bigly, Glenn. There you go. See, you hear that? Hear that? Hear that? Yeah. That's VV Nation out there. They know who I am. They know what I like. And they will use Glennisms all over the place. How about the new music? Uh, did you play that music last week too? How about the new music? Uh, Joey used, uh, took away my music that I set up originally. And I guess we needed time for new music. But that, that new music is kind of hot. All right. With that, uh, again, Dr. David Paul was here last week, did the presentation. Did you guys like it? Yes or no? Yes or no? Just type a yes or no in the room. I think he did a good job from what I could see. And I did see some of it while I was in Guatemala. I did take a look at some of it uh, just to see what was going on. And I think he did a great job, and I'm thankful. Oh, my board's not on, unless I would give him an applause uh, to let everybody know. I thought that he did. He did, he did good. So... Um, and that was only because I was out. There we go. That was only because I was out and about. Um, and again, I had a really good trip. There we go. There we go. Had a good trip. And everybody keeps telling me, Land, you need to tell me about what happened in Guatemala. I don't have a platform to do to, to be able to really do that. I'm not going to use the VectorVest platform to tell you all about my trip. I got to find a way where I can get you guys hooked up. If you follow me on Facebook, uh, you got to see all of the pictures that I took while I was in, God in Guatemala. I took a lot of pictures. I did. So that was probably a good way um, to follow what was going on. Somebody says, um, you got a tan, bro. Uh, not in Guatemala. It was actually between 50 and 60 degrees there the whole time, and we were up in higher elevation. So I got all this stuffiness coming on um, because moving, coming from there from a week ago to coming back to North Carolina, the weather was hot. Good, googly muggly. It was hot, wasn't it? It was hot. So I got a little bit of congestion going on, and that's it. So no, nothing bad, nothing worse than that. It was just coming back from there and coming back to here. All right, so thank you for responding in regards to uh, what you thought about the David Paul uh, video being played on Trending Thursday. Every time I scroll past the pic of you in front of that yellow arch, I think you're about to start a flash mob. Yeah, I don't. Mark, Mark follows me. <laughs> Mark follows me on my Facebook. Joey follows me on my Facebook. So uh, it was a great trip. So what do we do here in Trending Thursday? We talk about what's making news. We talk about the stocks. We use the VectorVest software to analyze the stocks. Gives you an idea of just because they're making the news, are there stocks, are they stocks worth investing in? You make the call, you make the decision, but we always start off with what's going on in the market. Market direction uh, affects my 80% of the stocks in the market. So you need to know what's going on from a market perspective, and that's why we always start there. So from that, uh, I think I'm going to get Joey to put me, can I click right here? Or you, you wanna go to the store? Yeah. You no, first? no. Actually, let's go into the software first. Joey's right. Let's go into the software. Let's go look at it from a vector vest perspective of what the market is doing. Let me pull it up on my screen over here. And this is important. If you're not a subscriber to the software, you don't get this information. But at least every Thursday, we provide you with that information to give you a feel of what the vector vest system feels about what's going on in the market. And if you are a subscriber, you get this information every night in our daily color guard report. 
Steve Chappell is doing the Daily Caligari Report this week, and he always does a really good job. So we can see right now, as of today, all of the major indices are up. That's great. Uh, the Dow is the only one that's up 1%, but everything else is up. The NASDAQ is up 6 tenths. S&P 500 and 100 are up uh, together about 6 tenths of a percent. And our vector vest composite is pushing up about seven tenths of a percent. A good up day in the market, a lot more stocks going up than going down. If we look at our color guard, three green lights today. For those of you who are in our jockey club, which is our day trading room, we provide for you every uh, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. until 10.30 if you have the derby tool. Uh, we've got three green lights today. Primary wave is up. It was up yesterday. It's still up today. We did go long in our swing trading portfolio, and I did change from energy stocks over to um, Thornton's Thunder. So we are in Thornton's Thunder um, from a swing trade perspective. But that is something you get part of our day trading room every day at all. And there you go, Jay. So I answered your question in regards to that. All right. So the market shows that we're up today. Um, our buy to sell ratio shows that we have more buys in the system than sells. The market is showing signs of strength. The underlying trend in the market is up. The market is in an uptrend by the VVCRT above the value of one. So everything looks good. Every time I don't enter PM moves at the close, it gaps up the next morning. Ah, so John, you got to make a decision. If you're comfortable looking at the stock by the end of the day and you think it's going to go up, you buy it. If not, then you don't buy it. And, you know, you can't look at what didn't happen or what did happen. You've got to make a decision. All uh, right, primary wave moves sorry, on the primary wave. Ah, okay, on the primary wave. Hey, it's a fast signal, uh, um, John. It's a fast signal designed for the more active trader. And that's what it's for. And it does a darn good job. It really, really, really does. All right, so that's the market as we see it today. Let's talk about what's making news in the market so that we can get a feel of um, how to best take advantage of it. So we're going to start with the Fed. See, you see where my picture is? Is, is that the way it's supposed to be? Because they can't read with me. All right, it doesn't matter. All right, we'll leave it that way. Jerome Powell, the Fed won't hike preemptively. So we all talk about what's going on with inflation, and I've got people saying, Glenn, you need to stop talking about inflation because you're going to scare people. I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm trying to let you know what's going on. The Fed knows inflation is an issue or inflation is running hot. Who's calling me? Oh, Okay. I got I got a gig. I got to call her back. Can't do it now. People got to understand, Joey. I'm doing trending Thursday. I think you would turn it off. It is off. You didn't hear it, did you? Oh, you didn't hear it. Listen. There we go. All right. So, um, he knows that inflation is running hot, and the Fed is willing to let inflation run hot. And a lot of it is because of the jobs issue. Um, pretty substantial part, perhaps, of all is the rising prices a result of the economy reopening, Powell said, in describing the current high rate of inflation. He said that the current rise doesn't reflect a tight economy, all right, though it's lasting longer than he expected. So this was most recently done a couple of days ago on the 22nd in regards to what the Fed is looking at in regards to raising rates. Now, also, Fed Chair Powell says it's very, very unlikely that the U.S. will see 1970s-style inflation. Interesting that he says that because, um, again, the Fed is allowing the inflation rate to run a little tighter, a little hotter than we normally say because the Fed just wants to make sure that we spur on the economy, keep the economy going. And by doing so, you know, we prices are going to go up. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Prices are going to go up. But the Fed says that everything is still okay. Very, very unlikely the repeat of 1970-style inflation could happen, primarily because the Fed's commitment to price stability. Committee Republicans repeatedly pressed Powell on whether the economy was headed towards hyperinflation, the hyperinflation of that era. All right. Next story. Now, this is interesting. Wage gains at factories— fall behind the growth in fast food. Now, now, that's interesting because the fast food industry is looking for as many people as possible because as the market is, as, as the economy is reopening, you look everywhere. Everywhere as you walk down the street, everybody's looking to hire somebody. And a lot of that is in um, the fields of um, 
fast food and the service industry. That's where the jobs are. So I asked in the jockey club this morning, um, is there a lack of skilled jobs that are available? Interesting, right? So when we look at, and, and a lot of factory jobs are not always considered to be skilled jobs, but they're considered to be good jobs, good long-lasting jobs. So it's interesting that the wage gains, so they're not raising the wages in the factories, but slowly but surely there's getting a, a common feel that the um, the minimum wage will grow. And there it is. That's the big number that everybody is looking for, $15 minimum wage. Now, uh, as I look at the gains in the factories, wage gains in the factories, I don't know what they start off in the factories at anymore. Do you know? You know, I don't know. But it looks like uh, once we start to think about raising the minimum wage, that it's going to outpace the wages that are coming in at the factories. Interesting, huh? All right. Glenn is really enjoyed by your play-by-play after the market opened on the Derby this morning. Lots of energy, lots of fun. Thank you for that, Derek. He's new to our jockey club, which is our trading room. All right, and I've got another story on the economy. Big thing here. How about this? U.S. economy is bouncing back from COVID-19. Now, foreign investors are rushing in. U.S. is the likely top destination for foreign investments, according to the U.N., as businesses meet uh, bounce in demand for everything from steel to pet food. Wow. That could help to bolster the economy as well as foreign investors are looking to put money in the U.S. So the market is running. Stocks are running. The whole world is just just rocking and rolling, but that's because if you compare it to last year, everything is looking good compared to last year, but we had COVID-19. So we got to keep it all, wow, Mark, we got to keep it all in um, perspective. I like that. Glad to see Super Sticker back on so we can support Trending Thursday. Big thumbs up. Thanks, Glenn and Joey. Thank you for that super chat. So in, in case any of you are wondering what that is. Mark just paid us money um, by way of YouTube for the work that we do here. And it's not requested or required, but he did that. And, you know, it pops up in the chat to show that he just gave us $25, which is awesome. High five, Joey. High five. Way to go, Mark. We appreciate that. Mark is a really big proponent of supporting uh, the Jockey Club, number one, and for supporting Trending Thursday. So thank you again. And anybody who wishes to do so can do so, but you'll never hear me ask for it. All right? You'll never hear me ask for it. Thank you, Mark. And there was Joey in the background saying thank you, Mark, as well. All right. So um, a lot of things happening in the background from a wage perspective, from looking at inflation, from looking at if we're going to raise uh, the interest rates. And, and this is a big story of foreign companies or foreign investors are coming into the United States. So from here, we're going to go back into the software. I want to do it that way. Yeah, I'm going to go back into the software. But I'm going to change, and this time, we're going to go into our Viewers tab, go into the Watch List Viewer, and how come I don't, why he doesn't, why don't they say this, see, see what I wanted them to see. What did I do? Okay, is that what I do? There we go. That's why Joey's here. Joey takes care of me. Joey just always takes care of me. Let's go to Trending Thursday. No. And let's go find today, which is 624, 624, 2021. So we always, here's the stocks that I'm going to look at today, number one. Number two, let's go look at the two stocks that I look at for the market. We're going to look at the VVC, the Vector Vest Composite, which tracks the move of over 8,800 stocks or 8,000 stocks. And for those of you who are not part of the Vector Vest software, we're going to look at the spiders, the S&P 500. Let's go take a look at them on a graph, and you're going to see that the market overall is hitting all-time new highs. All right, when I look at the S&P, new high today on the S&P 500, there's the market over the last three months, bottom left, top right, just 
currently moving higher and higher. The 3 and the 8 on the uh, exponential moving averages on the S&P 500 crossed over yesterday. We still have more upside, but now in territory of new all-time highs on the spiders and on the VVC. Not an all-time high, but pushing that level right now. The 3 and the 8 on the vector vest composite just crossed. And a lot of people always ask me, why do you use 3 and 8 exponential moving averages? Because they work. Whether you're a longer-term investor or a shorter-term trader, the 3 and 8 exponential moving averages does a great job of getting you in a stock, keeping you in the stock without panicking. Nice up day on the VectorVest composite, pushing that level of resistance, sitting at $66.99 on the VVC. But nice uh, coming off of this bounce of support, which was sitting at the value of 65.34. One, two, three, four days in a row, the market is up. Look at the volume. The market's volume looks good as well. I'm going to take off stochastics. The market's volume looks good. So not only are we moving higher, but we've got conviction to the move. The market is just moving higher. So I looked at the background story of what's going on from a market perspective, and now you can see visually, bottom left, top right, on the vector vest composite, and it's still moving. Glenn, do you think the market may pull back if heat of the level of re uh, uh, heat of the level of resistance? Done. Right now, if we're still hitting overall new highs, I got no levels of resistance, no real levels of resistance. The current level of the high happens to be the current level of resistance. All right, so. Can the market rebound? At any given time, the market can. I've got relative timing on the vector vest composite. I can see that it's moving higher. The market is getting hotter as far as moving up. Will there ever be a notification when the 3 and 8 cross? Mona, no. We look at it in the software on a daily basis to see where the 3 and 8. Look at the last time the 3 and 8 crossed back here. Boom. Look at that run. Look at the pullback and look how the 3 and 8 kept you in. Run, 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 and that's where you would have gotten out with a 3.8 cross bearish. Was that a good run in the market? The 3.8 does a really good job uh, with the market, but there is no notification of when the 3 and the 8 will cross. All right, so that's where we stand in the market. The market is moving higher. The Fed knows what's going on. All of the news behind it. Does anybody have any other questions in regards to what the market activity is? What does this mean for you? Well, what it means for you right now is that it's okay to buy stocks. Just be careful, all right? The market is still running hot. Just be careful. Your existing positions, just manage them. And if you're going to buy into new positions, make sure that you're buying into new positions on a rising day like today. All right, we had a little bit of a bearish candle yesterday, which was called the Gravestone Doji with no follow through, no follow through. So there wasn't, looks like there might have been a change in market sentiment right there. But the market's still saying, nope, we're going to go keep on going up. And you know what it looks like? It looks like an airplane just wanting to take off and just run. And the last thing is, in case you feel that the train just left the station, right now, as long as the market is going higher, you're okay to buy stocks. Can you make today's candle a little taller? Um, no. Well, let's go see. If I do this, that's the I can zoom into it. And it's, that's a full-blown open candle. There is no wick at the top. There is no retracement from the day. The market is just running higher. So, um, Drew, that's as tall as I can make it unless I zoom in. That, that's, as, that's as tall as I can make it. Does VectorVex have an alert feature when a list of stocks have their 3A cross? And you know what I can do? I'll show you what I can do. Um, I can make a search in the software. Oh, it was a joke. I got you. Uh, I did try. I did try, Drew. If I want to find in the in the Unisearch tool, uh, YouTube. If I want to find stocks where the three and the eight just cross, I have that ability. So I'm looking for stocks. I made a search stocks that are less than two dollars where the three and the eight just crossed, but they have to be greater than fifty cents and they have to be greater than hundred thousand shares in volume. I can run that at any point in time, right? And it will present me with stocks. Here's the stocks. So if I want to find cheap stocks where the 3.8 just crossed, there's a way to do it. I can do it in the software. I can do it in the software. All right? But that's some of the power that we have within the VectorVest software to accomplish what you're trying to do. Now, many of you do not have the software, and that's fine. If you look down below the video, there's a link where you can take advantage of the VectorVest software and make your own search like this for 99 cents. 
99 cents for 30 days. How about an email? Nope, we won't send out an email, um, but I've shown you an easy way to be able to do so is to be able to run a search. And in case you're not in front of the VectorVest software, you can run this anytime you want. Run it at the end of business of the day and keep, keep those stocks in mind for the next day. All right, so that's all the questions. The problem with the restaurant industry, servers make $4 an hour plus tips during busy times. They wouldn't make a lot of tips. But with slow restaurant businesses, they make more on unemployment. I hear you on that, John. But if business is picking up in these restaurants, a lot of business, a lot of these restaurants are having to turn people away or people have to wait a long time in these restaurants because they don't have servers. This is a time if you are a server, you probably have a really good opportunity to make some money in, 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 in work big time. All right, so just just to just to keep that in perspective, I'm going to go back to the watch list. I'm going to go to my next story. Those certain workers can now make fifteen dollars an hour flipping burgers in McDonald's, and they can. So they can, but I know people who are in the service industry right now are making a killing because restaurants are looking for them. Number one, and then number two, a lot of people they're busy. They are busy and they're getting the tips. So I'm, I'm just putting that out there from that perspective. I hear you, um, but I'm putting that out there from that perspective as well. All right, we're going to get into my next story. Let me go back here, get into our next story. The next thing I'm going to start talking about is meme stocks again. Why? Because they are all the buzz. GameStop, uh, how many of you are in the meme stock space right now? How many of you are playing either GameStop or AMC? Those are the two big meme stocks. I will be transparent. I am in both. Um, I am in AMC. I had 500 shares. When it ran up most recently, I made like five, almost 500%. I took my money off the table. I'm still playing with 250 shares. Uh, GameStop, I own 50 shares of that. And I like this story. GameStop raises more than $1 billion in the latest share offering. Both of these companies are raising money to show the hedge funds that are, sh uh, that are shorting them that they are viable businesses. And I, that's where the big disconnect comes in between why these stocks are being so heavily shorted. And a lot of times, uh, uh, any... any any company can short a stock because they think a stock is going to go down. But these stocks were so overly shorted, and um, Wall Street bets, the retail investors stood up and said, we're not going to take this. You're not going to put these companies that are doing what they can do to make money and push them out of business. And that's what this is all about. That's what all of this is all about. So... Could these be trades of a lifetime? They could be because of the amount of shortage on these stocks. That's all I'm going to say about it as far as giving you my insight. Um, that's the reason I am playing the both of these companies. Uh, I did a story on our other YouTube channel where the SEC was starting to look into this. And if they find some really bad dirt going on between GameStop and AMC, some heads are going to roll. But the story is the SEC has got to do something about it. Are they going to go do something about it or was it just an inquiry as to what's going on? I don't know. Can you do this on the app? I have the app. And um, just in case you didn't know, um, Patrick did a great job today. He does it every morning, every Thursday morning at 11 a.m. He shows you how to use the VectorVest app to do a lot of the things that we're doing right here on Trending Thursday. So I'm just putting that out there. Will anyone ever short AMC and GME? Everyone, a lot of people overshorted uh, AMC and GME. Citadel is the bigger holder of the shorts out there on both of those stocks. All right, so um, the majority of the float on, the major on both of these stocks are held by retail investors, which means that if that's the case, when the hedge funds have to cover their shorts, they're going to have to cover at the prices that the stock's prices are at now. They're going to have to buy back at a much higher price. And that's why everybody who's playing this space, that's what they're looking for. That's what they're looking for. So we'll see what happens. Hello, Farhan from India. All right, so let's go take a look at the stocks that I have set up for in here. Ooh, there we go. The two stocks that I have in here are going to be GME and AMC. Let's go take a look at them on, an, on a graph. Now, when I look at the, um, these stocks, I'm not ever looking at the fundamentals in these stocks. Just not going to do it. These stocks are not fundamentally sound. Even though they are setting up their work model uh, to be productive and make money in the market, 
the fundamentals are not really good on these stocks. As I look at GME right now, since that high that happened on 6-8 of 2021, look at the pullback. The 3 and the 8s are negative. But I do see a level of a floor sitting at the price of about 199.67. Let's see if that level of the floor can handle it. Now, the thing in regards to these stocks, this is more of a technical play and it's more of an emotional play, all right? And I know that as investors in the market, it's not about emotion, but these are more so emotional plays based upon what's going on with these stocks and the idea that they're being overshorted. So this is a movement. There's nothing fundamentally sound about these stocks. I am looking at the technicals on these stocks, but this is all about do you think that these stocks have the ability to go ex extraordinarily high because hedge funds have to cover? That's the question that you have to answer when you're looking at these meme stocks. So as you look at this, you see the pullback. I do see a level of a floor. Let's see if that level of the floor will hold, number one. Number two, let's see if any news is gonna push this higher. With the news of they, they raised a billion dollars in capital, not enough to move the stock just as of yet. So we'll keep our eyes on it. Let's go look at AMC. In my, in my, my opinion, AMC is the better play because of the price point. All right, when I look at a GME right now trading at $214, AMC trading at $56. Notice that on the pullback here, the 3 and the 8 held. The 3 and the 8 is still bullish right now, even though AMC is sitting in the channel. I've made a lot more money most recently on AMC than GME, and again, a lot of it has to deal with the price point on the stock. The stock is sitting in the channel, the 3 and the 8 are bullish, Why on GME, the 3 and the 8 are still bearish. Listen, whether you're diamond hands, paper hands, all of the new terminology that's come out about this, all I can do is tell you the news behind it and tell you what you see on the graph. I still own the AMC, I still own the GME, I still think that way back in the background, there's some dirty stuff going on by the hedge funds. That's my opinion with the overshorting. I think that the SEC needs to have a rule in place that no any, no any stock can be shorted as much as either one of these two have been. That's what I think. And we'll see what the SEC has to do with this. All right, any questions? Any questions? Uh, sir, what do you say about the Indian indices nifty will tomorrow? I don't know. I'm not looking at the futures on the Indian market. I know the bank nifty and the nifty 50 uh, in the Indian market have a mind of their own. The, the, the rest of the world could be going up or down, and those two will do their own thing. So the only time I ever look at those are on our jockey club. When we in our trading room, I look at those every day in the futures. Who is here after code with Harry? V what is that? I don't know what that is. Glenn, are you still in Sundial? Not right now. I pulled the trigger. I'm out of Sundial. I'm going to wait for a better buying opportunity because that whole marijuana industry, uh, it's number 221 out of 222. It's the second worst industry right now in the market. I'm going to wait for the industry to start running back up before I pull the trigger back on Sundial. I took a big hit on Sundial. I am not currently in on Sundar right now. And a question came up in saying that the volume on AMC is down. That makes sense. You know why it makes sense? Because the stock's moving sideways. The stock is in a channel. Volume is not going to be up or down. It's going to fall. It's going to fall because it's sitting in a channel. Can you tell me where to invest? I have 45. Nope. I can't do that, swag boy. That's not my job. I cannot tell you where to put your money. I am not... I'm not a broker. I'm not a financial guy. I'm here to teach you how to use the VectorVest software in regards to helping you to make money in, in the market. CTRM, I'm still in it. Man, am I getting my butt kicked. But I've done the videos on why I still like the stock. If you haven't looked at our other channel, please do so. All right. Tell us something about uh, the Indian market. Nope, I won't do it in here. I, it's not the place for me to do it, Dave, uh, Dev. Not here. All right, I'm going to close out of this graph. There's no more questions about my meme stocks right now, then I'm going to go to my next story. Let's do that. Let's go to the next story. Ah, Bitcoin. How many of you are in Bitcoin? Woo! How many of you are in Bitcoin? Type a yes or a no in the room. I'm very curious to know because remember not too long ago, 
Um, Bitcoin was the craze, right? Bitcoin was the craze. Right now, China is putting the kibosh on that big time. Bitcoin slumps as China cracked down dense activity. Holders refuse to cave. So there's a whole bunch of people out there who are still in Bitcoin and they are not moving. How about that? All right. I'm just, I'm just saying, Glenn, I think the shippers are a big play for some time. And John, I definitely feel the same way, which is why I'm still holding CTRM. Would you average down on CTRM? Nope. I'm never going to average down on a stock ever, ever. Uh, I'm not going to put good money after bad money. If the stock is going down, I wait. I will wait. That's just me. I will not put good money after bad money. I need the stock to stop going down before I start putting more money in the stock. All right. Bitcoin is the future. Well, you know, right now, I'm going to show you in regards to Bitcoin. This, so this is one story. Um, China is cracking down on the miners over in China. Another story. Watch this. Um, here's another story. Expect the bloodbath. Bitcoin drops below 30000 for the first time since January. That's another thing. All right. And there's a lot of people out there who are holding on the Bitcoin and they're not going to get out of their Bitcoin. I saw a story how a millionaire who person who made a millionaire was made a millionaire off of Bitcoin, lost a whole lot of money in one day and still holding. And it sounds like a lot of you are in the same spot where you're holding on to your Bitcoin. I'm not going to tell you to get rid of it. I'm just trying to show you what's going on. And there's another story. Look at this Dogecoin branded a Ponzi by Federal Reserve Bank President. Think about that. So China is cutting down on the miners. All right, it's down below 30,000. And the Federal Reserve Bank President is saying that it's a Ponzi scheme. There's a lot of negativity being thrown after Bitcoin, yet there's a lot of you guys who are still holding on to it. And I'm not judging. I am not judging. If you still feel confident in Bitcoin, hold it. I'm telling you what's going on in the background, and let's do this. Let's go to my list. I've only got a couple of stocks that I look at for Bitcoin, uh, BTCS. I look at Mara, and I look at Riot. These are the miners, and this is bit the Bitcoin uh, right here. I'm going to put them all three on a graph. I want you to see what's going on with Bitcoin. Put this on a three-month graph. There it is. BTCS is a crypto. That's... That's it right there in a nutshell. So the news is backing it up. The graph is backing it up. But I will give you this. If you're still holding it, this, uh, BTCS is actually moving sideways right now. Here's your line in the sand sitting at 53 cents. If, and this is my opinion, if BTCS falls below that, that shows that it's got more legs to the downside. Our indicator RT is below the value of one. It's not in an uptrend. Volume is just not there. There's nothing good about BTCS right now. Let's go look at the miners. When I go look at Mara, Mara's did a little bit of bounce off a couple levels of support. Look at that. The three and the eight on Mara is about to cross over. Interesting. All right. So even though China is cracking down on the miners, I'm going to show you something else. If I connect the lows, off of this low, Mara's moving higher, folks. Look at that. Interesting. Even with all of the news in play, Mara is moving lower. You know what that is? That's sort of like a, an ascending triangle. All right? Think about that. Let me draw another line. Oops. Let me draw another line right here. There's a level of resistance. That's an ascending triangle. That's very bullish on Mara. Do you see that? Do you see that? That's very bullish on Mara right now. The 3 and the 8 just crossed today, right at a level of resistance sitting at $30.12. Mara may not, be a bad, uh, may not be a bad trade, but wait. What I'd really like is the RT to show me that it's in an uptrend. What I'd really like to see if it'll bounce up above through that level of resistance, I've got a selling point or profit target sitting at about $39.81, which is my next level of resistance. Mara may not be a bad play, even with all of the news that's out there about Bitcoin. This miner doesn't look half bad. And especially when I've got a trend line connecting the lows, it's trending higher and it's got a solid level of resistance. That is an ascending triangle from the perspective of technical analysis. Let's go to the next one. Same thing with Riot. Let me draw my line. 
Same thing with Riot. Freehand line, connect the lows. Look at that. Look at that style. Let me make that a little darker for you. Both of these miners, and here's my level of resistance. Actually, I got another level of resistance right here. Sitting at 3381. Beautiful. Another ascending triangle. Both the, and the 3 and the 8 just crossed positive again. Both Riot and Mara are heading to 100 price target by next year. I'm not going to call that a price target. I won't put that out there. But I will tell you that based upon what I see graphical technically, they both could be good buying opportunities. Do you guys see that, yes or no? Do you guys see that, yes or no? And with all of the news that's out there, this is just straight technical analysis, folks. This is just straight technical analysis. They could be opportunities. That's all I'm putting out there. All right? Nobody, nobody sees the, the, the technical analysis. Nobody's answering. Are they, are they that slow today? It's not Monday. It's Thursday. All right. So I see the yeses now. Okay. So I like them both, even with the news. Just keep that in mind. Put it in a watch list. See what happens. And see if they break through those levels of resistance based on the ascending triangle. Uh, a Bitcoin for your thoughts? Woo. You, bet, you put that in a super chat for me, Drew, and I'll give you all the thoughts you want. You give me Bitcoin, one Bitcoin in a super chat, I'll give you whatever you want, and I'll give you Joey. I'll sell you Joey. Wait a minute. I, hold on. I'll, I'll, if you give me a Bitcoin for my thoughts... I'm going to sell you, Joe. You can come pick him up right now. Wait a minute. <laughs> you, you, no, no, no. You just sit there, Joey. I got this. I got this. I got this. You give me a Bitcoin for my thoughts, baby. Woo-wee. Joey scratch it. That's it? Huh? That's what I'm worth? I'm 30 it's, it's about 30 grand. Yeah. You're worth that. I, I should do it. A little more than that. Uh, you, no, 30 grand. <laughs> <laughs> Give some change. <laughs> you, I, I might even give them back a little bit of change. All right. So, <clears throat> again, from a technical standpoint, both of those miners, something to keep on your on your on your um your radar. All right. Yes, now, the thing is with Doge, I don't track Doge in the VectorVest software. I don't track Doge, so I can't give you any perspective. But we'll do this. Show you what I'm going to do. Let me see if I can do this. I'm going to I'm going to go outside of the realm of what I do. Doge Let's go take a look. Here's a price quote on Yahoo. See if I can get a graph. There's a graph on Doge. Let's go put this on a put on a 6 month graph. Even Doge. All right, so this is the the closest I can get to you uh, from a graph perspective because I don't have Doge in the software. It's also pulled back as well. It's also pulled back as well. Um, you know something? If I could draw a line, and I don't know if I, if I could draw, let's go see if I could do a full screen. Let me see if that works. If I could draw a line connecting the highs from a Doge perspective, I'd wait for Doge to break out of the downtrend. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I would wait for Doge to break out of the downtrend. Type in the room if that makes sense. I can clearly see from a technical standpoint that there is a, <clears throat> a downtrend. Um, your, your other question was coin. We do track coin. We do track coin. I would do it as well. Now, coin on the other, uh, that's the intraday. Let's put us on three-month graph. Let's go take a look at coin. Same scenario. Coin is in a channel. Coin is in a channel. I definitely would like to see the break above that 249.95. All right, to break out of that channel. All right, so that's the best that I can give you on Doge, but on Coin, it is straight up in the channel. Not a ton of volume. Let me zoom in. Yeah, there's the volume. Main volume, um, 15 million was done a few a couple of weeks back ago, but even with that, uh, Coin is in a channel. All of this news behind what China is doing and what the Fed, bank, whatever the heck he whoever it was, there's a lot of bad talk behind um, Bitcoin. There's a lot of you who believe that Bitcoin is the future. And with that, I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm okay with that. Just know that you time your trades, trade your plan, uh, plan your trades, trade your plan. 
If you're going to be in it, you need to know when you're going to get out of it. For coin right now, I've got a level of support at 212.06. If it falls below that, it's been touched a couple of times. If it falls below that, you probably should think about getting rid of it. If you're holding it right now, then you're going to, you're going to, you're going to take the bumps and the bruises along with it. But really, for me, if you're thinking about getting into it, if you're not already into it, it's got to break above that level of resistance of 249.95. Ethereum, I don't track at all. Ethereum, I don't track here in the VectorVest software. So how do you play the blockchain technology aspect? Um, you find a blockchain stock. Uh, I need a, do we have a blockchain? You don't know. What the, I need a blockchain stock. And I would just track the graph movement of the blockchain stock to be able to do So Kinthos, that's what I do. The same thing I would do for any stock, I would look at a graph, whether it's in VectorVest or not. Block, B-L-O-K, B-L-O-C. Do I track a B-L-O-C? Yep, we track. No, we don't. Well, Riot is, is blockchain, but it's a minor. Uh, uh, and Coinbase is different from that. But Square, no, Square, PayPal, no. No, no. Uh, B-L-O-K, let's go track that. I do have block. There we go. Let's go take a look at it. NVIDIA? No. NVIDIA is chip. Uh, I know. Blockchain video. And, and, and video. And then Mara and Riot, we do track. That's what I use from that perspective. Same thing with Block. Same kind of scenario. What is it? It's in a chain. It's in a, um, a channel. So the same thing I said about Riot, Mara. Riot and Mara, though, were in ascending triangles. When I looked at Coin, when I looked at uh, Doge, when I looked at Block, these are all moving sideways. I definitely want to see these stocks break out of their channels before I move on them. All right? It's math. It's not a stock. I got you. All right. So, um, Japan is opening several cryptocurrencies on Coinbase, so I read. I've been reading Coinbase. Um, uh, what is it? Coin. What is my Coinbase? That's picking up a lot of steam. Sorry, I'm having trouble Oh, my gosh. You. Hush up, Siri. Um Coin was picked, uh, and look at when it first came out. I bought on that day like a knucklehead. I know better than to buy uh, an IPO, but I did because there was a lot of hype about it. And look at it just fall, fall, fall. I need right now for the stock to break out of that level of resistance before I would consider buying it. Now, RT is rising, but not by much. That's what I'm concerned about is that channel. That's what I'm, ta that's what I'm concerned about is that channel, folks. Right? I don't care which stock, whether it's Block, whether it's Coin, uh, and Riot and Mara are two different animals. As miners, they're in that ascending triangle. These two are sitting in a channel. I need the channel. To, I need you to get out of that channel before I pull the trigger. All right. Any other questions on my Bitcoin story? Any? 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 No? All right. Let's go to my next story. Do, 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 do. My next story is going to be on travel stocks. Did you guys know? Look at this. Big story. Resorts World to open in Las Vegas as a business rebounds after COVID-19. Look at this. The first new mega casino, and this is after COVID-19, first new mega casino on the Strip in more than a decade, $4.3 billion Resorts World. Ooh, that's a lot of money. And it's a new mega casino. Opens here this week as the throngs, um, as the throngs of mostly massless tourists, uh, in not tourists, ter terrorists, tourists, indulge in the city's famous casinos once again. That's huge. And evidently, they're looking at the reopening to be a blast for them to make some money. Right, to be a blast to make some money. All right. Somebody says miners are moving their equipment from China to Russia and Kazakhstan. Do you know that those miners are using up a lot of energy to mine their Bitcoin? I did a story on that not too long ago on the amount of energy that is being used, electricity being used to mine that Bitcoin. Riot and Mara have the machines. Those are the companies that mine it. They have the, the rigs to mine, rig, uh, to mine it. So... There you go. No, Steve, we're not saying that in here. No, we're not doing that. All right, so that was a big story. 
in regards to travel stocks. A lot more people are trying to get out. They're trying uh, to go have fun. Casinos may be big this summer. As we get hot and heavy into the summer months, casinos may be big this year. So you know what else happens and when it comes time to travel stocks? I don't know how many of you knew this. U.S. airports to receive $8 billion, $8 billion to help pay bills as travel recovers. This story came out. Here's my story date. It came out two days ago. Did you guys know that? Because I didn't see it in the news. Did you guys already know that? I want, I, I'm just curious to know. Type a yes or a no in the room. So we, we've been bailing out the airports or airlines all throughout COVID. We have been. But I didn't realize that we just gave them $8 billion to help pay their bills. So the airlines are ramping up. I know it's people are saying nobody knew. Nobody knew. Very interesting, huh? But I found this story, but that's going to help to aid the airlines to keep them busy, to keep them operating as travel starts to pick up. As travel starts to pick up. Passengers are returning, but airports say they're still in need help to weather the pandemic's financial hit. So the government gave them $8 billion. Somebody says, do we get a free ticket? No. No, you don't get a free ticket. But who will pay for the bailouts? Lou, the government is. And that's another conversation for another time that I'm not willing to have right here. All right, that's, man, I got a spider crawling right next to me. I knew. Did you see the spider, Joey? There it is. All right, live on TV, folks. Killed the spider. Didn't want the spider to bite me. It was hanging from the ceiling. I know something in the side of my eye. Spider go bye-bye. All right, but... I think that that's big news to keep and understand what's keeping the airlines running. But could that be huge to make sure that they're fully staffed, to make sure that people can travel? And interesting how this is going to affect the airlines. All right, let's do this. So I found two ETFs. I found an ETF for travel. Uh, ETM, ETF MG, Travel Tech. ETF is known as Away. And then I'm going to look at the airlines, ETF as well, Jets. So I didn't want to have to look at each and every one of the airlines or each and every one of the casinos and all of that. Away is, you know, as a matter of fact, hold on, let me show you. Stock analysis report on Away. What does it do? The Exchange Traded Fund Incorporated in the USA. Um, move that over a little bit. There we go. The fund seeks to provide investment results before taxes and expenses correspond generally to the total return performance of the prime travel technology index. I think that this is a great ETF to track the world of travel as a whole. There's another one that I have that looks at the shipping travel. Um, I forgot the ETF. I used it in Trending Thursday a few times um, anybody remember what it did, what it, what it was? Uh, T-R-A. Uh, I forgot what it was. Does anybody remember what it was? Anybody, anybody, anybody? It's been an ETF that I've liked, but I don't remember what it was. Oh, T-P-O-R. T-P-O-R. There it is. I like that one as well to track transportation. All right, so I'm gonna look at t -Pour, I'm gonna look at Jets, and I'm gonna look at Away. All right, let's right click, view the stocks. So from a travel perspective, let's go put this on a three month graph. Wow, t -Pour, transportation is falling. But now with this news about what the government has done, now that the news about this new casino opening up in Vegas, um, Look at that bounce. I'd like to see the 3.8 bounce as well. Look at prior to this, when uh, the beginning of the year, as the, as the country started, as the world started opening up, look at what transportation did. Look at that. It pulled back a little bit. Interesting, sat in the channel, broke, 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 broke. Now it's getting ready to rise again. Star Bulk is about to break into a new high now. Yeah, that's in the shippers. That's another shipping company like CTRM. Let's go take a look. Jets, look at that. Man, so the news is out there. 
I don't think that the indices or the ETFs have responded yet. So that's the reason why we look at the news and then we analyze it in the VectorVest software because neither one of these have responded yet. And maybe a way, though, a way um, for travel is starting to move a little bit more than transportation and um, uh, the jets. This ETF is starting to move. The 3 and 8 look like they could cross today. I got a down day. RT tells me it's in an uptrend as compared to the other two. RT on jets is below one in a downtrend. RT on the T-poor below one in a downtrend. So it looks like Away may be a place to play that's catching up so far, keeping up with the news so far where the other two are not. All right, Glenn, if you have a chance, take a look at earnings per share on Starbucks. I will put that, as long as you stay here, that's one of the stocks that I will look at today at the end. Um, I will take a look at that at the end. All right, any questions on my travel stocks? Now, Bill, remember, I looked at Jets, so I didn't have to look at any of the individual airlines. Now, Jets tracks all of the airlines. I like that instead of having to, to hone in on just one, but... I'm sure that within this industry, within this ETF, you're going to still have high flyers. Love may be one of them, American, United, any of them. When I flew to uh, Guatemala, I flew um, United. Uh, but there were three different planes that were going over. It was, it was United, it was American, and it was somebody else. That was, somebody else was way more expensive than, we, than any of us wanted to pay. So um, how about resorts like when? So when I, I was looking for a resorts ETF itself, I could not find it. So the closest that I could get to it would have been Away. Away was the ETF that I came up with to keep the resorts, everything like that in play. Uh, that was the closest that I could get. I couldn't find an ETF specifically for resorts. Now, you would think that they would have one, and I'm sure that they're not far away from having something like that, but they just don't have it yet. The closest I could find was this ETF away. All right? All right, let's get on to my next story. Let me close that out. Let me get to my next story. Joey's yawning. I think I'm making him bored. Am I boring you, Joey? Yeah. Next story, COVID. Why is this important? Well, I officially became fully vaccinated on Monday. That was two weeks after my second shot. Um, so COVID-19 is still out there, but a lot more people are getting vaccinated. I'm in that group of people who have been vaccinated. But this is important. COVID-19 Delta variant. All right. The Delta variant threatens to set back Europe's recovery. This is a strain um, that a lot of people say is very, 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 very dangerous. It all depends on what news you read. I'm just reading the news. All right. But in regards to that, AstraZeneca and Pfizer vaccines are effective against the Delta COVID uh, uh, variant. Now, AstraZeneca is still not a shot that's available in the U.S. We all know that Pfizer is. We all know that. Uh, Moderna is. Johnson & Johnson is still on hold here in the United States. It's opened back up in Europe. AstraZeneca, though, is not here as open yet here in the U.S. It's not one of the main people out there. But they are out um, probably in the European markets. Uh, AstraZeneca and Pfizer remain broadly effective against the Delta and Kappa. I didn't know there was another a variant, Kappa variants in COVID-19. The study by Oxford researchers published in the journal Cell investigated the ability of the antibodies in the blood from people who were vaccinated with the two-shot regimens to neutralize highly contagious Delta and Kappa. So I have taken the Pfizer shot. I feel comfortable that I'm good against it. If the news says it, unless something else bad happens, and if the news says it, I'm comfortable. Uh, have a good weekend, Maria. Three dollars a week for driving trucks must be in demand for trucks. Uh, could be. Who give, who's getting three thousand? Who's getting three thousand dollars a week to drive trucks? I ain't seen no story on that. I'm just saying. And then I've got another story on, there it is. Uh, nope, that's the only two stories that I have on the COVID stocks. And a lot of it is dealing with the Delta, vi the Delta variant. Um, let's go look at Moderna. Let's go look at AstraZeneca and look at Pfizer. Those are my three stocks for 
Um, COVID. Now, you always know that there's always going to be an opportunity to make money. Fi uh, Moderna has always been my stock of choice since the beginning of the virus. Why? Because it was one of the few stocks that had good relative value, had good upside potential, and it was undervalued. And it was undervalued. I like that most biomedical companies are not like that. So Moderna has always been my stock of choice. The three and eight just crossed. I've got a level of resistance sitting at 227.71. A lot of people have made a lot of money on Moderna. If you're not in it now, I'd wait to see if it can break above that level of resistance. RT shows me that it still is in an uptrend. Let's go to AstraZeneca. Again, not a, not a, a shot that's available in the United States, but also moving up. Right at a level of resistance to 3 and 8 just crossed today. It's got a level of resistance at 59.34. Now, it looks a lot like the Moderna graph, but the price point is a lot smaller. Could this be a good play? Absolutely. RT is moving up. Volume has been pretty steady. I've got a little bit of a bearish candlestick pattern right there known as a gravestone doji. Let's see what happens tomorrow. If the stock will, will confirm that, or if the price will confirm that tomorrow or not. All right. And the last stock is Pfizer sitting in a channel right now. The three and the eight are negative. Uh, Pfizer's been the whipping boy of the coronavirus stocks. You know, Pfizer's been around a long time, number one. Number two, it didn't take any money from the government during Operation Warp Speed. It did it all on its own. But it's lagging behind the other stocks. Now, different price point, too, a little lower price point, but the stock is sitting in a channel. I always want to see a stock break out of a channel before I'm ready to jump on board. If you own the stock and you're in it and it's in a channel, leave it alone. All right? Leave it alone. Now, before I move on to uh, my next story, how many likes do we have so far, Joey? We need more likes than that. If you're liking the content, this is the way that YouTube gets these videos out, recommends these videos across YouTube land. The interaction. If you like this, please hit the like button, folks. Don't forget to do that. Hit the like button. Um, and that that's what keeps these videos pushing out all along YouTube land. How many people we have? We need to get at least 150 likes today. All right. We need to get a hundred. We need to get at least 150 likes today. All right, that's going to be my goal. If you really do want to support the channel and you like the content that you have, that you see here, hit the like button, folks. I'd really like to see us hit 150. All right, so those are my coronavirus stocks. And a lot of it, again, is based on uh, the, the, the Delta variant. Um, as more news comes out about it, I will put more out there as well for you. Likes don't affect an algorithm anymore, says Off the Hook Girls. Is that true, Joey? Joey says the likes do affect it. I don't know. Listen, I'm just the guy who sits up here on the camera and looks at you like this. As far as all the tech stuff, I listen to my peeps behind me uh, to help me out. But as far as I knew, that the likes were still important. And that's why I keep, start, I keep trying to push them. No? I don't know. Tom, I got you. Tom, I got you. And remember, I give you out, guys, an opportunity to type in your stocks at the end. That's when I'm looking at the individual stocks. I'm not doing them during my stories. I'm not doing them during my stories. At the end, I will give you, as long as you're here, I'm going to give you an opportunity to look at your stocks. All right? That's when it happens. That's when it happens. All right. Let's get to my last story. I got, what other story I got? Oh, yeah. So, what was the big thing that just happened this week? Amazon had Prime Day. So Joey says to me, Glenn, you need to do a story on Amazon. That was a suggestion on his part. But um, Amazon Day had, uh, Prime Day had already happened. So I, I got an ad for Amazon. You got an ad for me, huh? I wasn't trying to make it an ad for Amazon. I didn't see he was making an ad for Who well, said you that? You said the Prime Day was already over. It's not an ad for Prime Day. If you're going to listen to what I'm going to do right now, Shut your mouth before I do this. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Right. So, part what, what I, I hate I hate you right now. You hate me right now too. Go ahead. All right. Let's start here. All right. So, when, if you let me finish, stop interrupting me. Go ahead and start. All right. So, the biggest thing about Amazon is part of the Fang Group, right? Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google. 
So big day yesterday. Hold on. And I'm going to bring that up here. Big day. Total e-commerce sales during Amazon Prime Day surpasses $11 billion. That's a lot of money, right, Joey? Joey's got that in his back pocket. Joey pulled out his well. He got about $11 billion right there. At least. At least. All right. Total online retail sales in the United States during Prime Days were 6% higher than the transactions generated by the 2020 event, according to Adobe. Online retail sales uh, amounted to $5.6 billion and $5.4 billion on day two. That's a lot of dough. That made Monday the biggest day for digital sales this year and Tuesday the second busiest, according to Adobe. So it was a big thing. Now... I'm going to put the two things together, Amazon and FANG stocks, because Amazon is part of FANG stocks. I like to always consider FANG stocks the comfort food for stock investors, because those companies that are in the FANG group are good, solid companies overall. Now, I'm going to go back to this. Facebook, Alphabet keep rising, Apple and Netflix fade. So as we look at that, notice what's not in here. Amazon wasn't in here. So it, it had Alphabet, it had Alpha, and that was Google, they have Apple, but they didn't have Amazon in here. So that would be, you know, the thing, it would actually, I don't know how they made that that way without having Amazon in there because Google, Alphabet, blah, 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 blah. So let's go into uh, what I'm going to talk about. Fang you, but I also want to look at Amazon. All right, Amazon, big story. Let's go see if it's worth it to buy into it. But here's Fang Yu. This is the upside of the Fang stocks in one ticker symbol called FNGU. Couple of things. Look at the 3A crossover on the whole group of stocks on 521. Since that time, the 3 and 8 have been solid. Look at the run up. Now, you don't think that these nice gaps up for the past couple of days had Amazon had something to do with it? All right, that Amazon had nothing to do for it, do it. Then you can tell, ah, stop that. Um, Fang Comfort Food for selling calls. Then you can take your options premium and buy Cafe Bustelo and lots of beer for the summer. <laughs> All right. Um, I love that the Fang U is a one-stop place where you can trade all the Fang stocks in one. I like that. Above average volume, again, I think a lot of that had to do with Amazon. All right, now, let's go down here. Amazon, today is Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. Here's the two days of the prime day. The stock, Amazon was already in an uptrend, already in an uptrend. And I don't know if this is profit-taking or what. I still like the stock. I like that the 3 and 8 are still in place, even though they haven't crossed bearish yet. I've got a level of support that it's sitting at right now at 34.34. Right now it's at 34.44. It's about $10, cent, uh, $10 higher, right off of that level of support. Today's wick stopped right at that level of, res of support. I like that. Um, it, I need for you to take out that new high, though. Amazon still a good buy. RT, though, now shows me that, our, that the stock's in a downtrend. Big down day in Amazon day. All right. Feng Yu is leveraged three times. Absolutely. It is a triple leverage contra e It's a triple leverage ETF, whereas Amazon is not. It is triple leverage. All right. It is three times ETF, triple leverage ETF. All right. Was it bad news on Amazon? Did I miss the bad news on Amazon? Let's go peep that real quick. Where's Amazon? Right click. I can view the stock news right from the software. All right, it's trying to pop up somewhere. There it is. What happened with Amazon? 53 minutes ago, the return to work holding boom is underway. Uh, let's go look at press releases. Four hours ago, AWS announces a bug bus, the world's first global competition to find and fix 1 million software bugs. Hmm. Amazon, now seven hours ago, and Asmodee filed joint lawsuit against counterfeiters. There's a lot of people who are counterfeiting a whole bunch of stuff. I don't see where the big bad news, that's today. Yeah, there's nothing bad. I don't see any... I saw something that they are looking to, to go to get unionized. I did see news on that. 
I did see a, union, a, a, a news on that they're looking to get unionized, but I don't. Was that going to affect the stock to the downside that much? Amazon uh, yesterday, corporate buyer of renewable energy. Amazon recognizes computer science. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't know what's making. I did see there was a story on them um, thinking about going to, to become a union. So other than that, I don't know what else is big. It's down, you know, one in, almost two percent today. It is down almost two percent. New uh, union names Amazon number one enemy. Is that what it is, John? Have a good day, John. My other John. All right. So those are my stories for today. Any questions on my Amazon and uh, Fang stocks? Any questions there? Any, any questions, any questions, any questions? If not, you know what we're going to get into now, right? If not, you know what we're going to get into, right? I know, I'm going to push you. All right, this is the time where I get to look at some of your stocks. Now, there's two stocks that I did want to look at, and there's three. Comma... D O C U. All right, let's see what other stocks you got. C R. Go ahead. Torch. T R C H. W I S H. D A S H. T S L A. Who? Shopify. Z Nog. Okay. O K T A. TTD, ZIM, good shipping company. A A P L, C T R X. I did a video on that. I did I did a video on that. C T R X. Hmm. Uh, keep going. Um, Microsoft. M S F T. Fuck you. No, I already got Docu. I already got that. I just did that. I already got that. Uh, no, I didn't. Okay. Okay, those are my stocks I'm going to look at. If I did not pick one of your stocks, um, if you look down below this video, you're going to see a link for a free stock analysis, for a free stock analysis. All right, so let's go take a look at these stocks. Starbulk. In the transportation shipping company uh, uh, um, industry, I like the industry. I like the stock. All right. If I look at this stock, I like this stock. Bottom left, top right. Stock's got to break through that level of resistance. I like the 3 8 cross that happened on 6 8. Love the 3 8 crosses. Love that. Even on the pullback days, the 3 8s kept you in it. Nice open day today. Very little wick at the top. I like the stock. I like that stock, and I cannot lie. All right, let's go to the next stock. You guys are still putting in stocks. I just told you I wasn't going to look at any other stocks. I can't. CLNE. Ah, look at the 3 and 8 on it. It's about to turn negative. All right, in a channel as well, sitting between a level of resistance of $12 and a level of support of 20, uh, 10 18 About a $2 channel. But watch, look at this. One, two, three, four days down, the 3 and 8 are about to turn negative. If you own it, that may be a good opportunity to get out. If you want to wait for more confirmation, I got another level of support sitting at $10.18 where you can, if it falls below that, you definitely might want to think about getting out of it. RT is sitting at a value of 1.02, but getting close to breaking below the value of 1. All right, just keep that in mind. All right, next stock. Woo, DocuSign, like that. Look at the 3.8 cross here. And right here, even when the stock's price fell, look at that. The 3.8 really stayed in place and kept you in the stock. I love utilizing the 3.8 exponential moving averages when looking at a stock on a long-term basis or a trading basis. It does a really good job. When the 3.8 cross is negative, it's a good sign to get out of the stock. Right now, the stock is rocking and rolling. I got a little bit of a... Big wick at the top of this candle could be a shooting star, could be a possible change in sentiment on the stock. If you own the stock, I would look to see if the stock clo uh, closes down uh, below the low here. Uh, a couple of days ago, what was the low price? If the stock's price goes below 273.03, you might want to think about taking your profits off the table. All right, let's go to the next stock. 
CRM, another good stock. I like it. Bottom left, top right. A little bit of a pullback here. Found a level of a floor sitting at about 208.87. Same kind of scenario right here. If you own the stock, a little bit of a bearish candlestick pattern of a shooting star, it would be confirmed by tomorrow's candle. It would be confirmed by tomorrow's candle. Three and eight are still positive. Volume's been pretty steady. Stock's in an uptrend. Just be careful if you own it. Be nimble like a cat on a hot tin roof. All right, if you're going long like a retirement account, do you still use a 3 8 or, or In that case, I'll use a 50 or 200, or I'll even use a 20 and 50. I'll use a 20 and 50. That's a good midterm, but if you're super, 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 super long term, I will use a 15 200. All right, I will use a 15 200. All right, woo, torch. I own it. Good, Gordon Jean. I own it. <coughs> Today is the day, the ex dividend date. I got in on Tuesday. I think I'm trying to hold it to see what's going to go on with the dividend on it. I did a video on it, so we'll see what happens. I'm getting smoked on it. The 3 and the 8 just went negative. That's a good sign to sell to get out of the stock. RT went below 1. The stock's in a downtrend. And not only is it going down, the volume on it is above average volume. There's a lot of people selling the stock. I'm trying to see if the dividends were. I can still get out of the stock now and still be owner of record to catch the dividend on it, but man, is he getting torched, all right? Um, wish, I like the bounce off support and the three and the eight. Look at the combination of the two. Bounce off support, three and the eight ever since then, even though the big pullback day right here, the three and the eight never moved. Look at that. I like the stock. I like to see if it could break out above that level of resistance if I'm not currently in it. If I'm in it, leave it alone. RT went from below one to above one. Volume's pretty steady. I like the stock. After the stock is pulled back, I like the resurgence. If you're not in it, though, I'd wait for the breakout above that level of resistance. Next one, Dash. Everybody wants DoorDash. Man, I got to get in that DoorDash. Watch the candlestick. Again, another could be a bearish sentiment. Shooting star pattern. Let's see what tomorrow's candle will bring. The 3 and the 8 are still solid. RT is still good. Volume, eh. Um, but like the stock, what it's doing now, all-time high eh, on the last three months nonetheless. Three-time um, high. Three uh, a three-month high. Why are you using all these inconspicuous wordings? What inconspicuous? What wording is inconspicuous? Listen. I'm about as clear as a presenter that you will find on YouTube. Believe you me. You, uh, Hey, off the hook, girls, ask the room. I am about as transparent a presenter on this on YouTube than you'll find anywhere. I'm putting that out there. Anybody in this room want to disagree with that? Type a no in the room if you don't agree with that. All right? Don't just listen to me. Listen to my folks here in VV Nation. I keep, I'm, I'm straight to the point, um, and you always hear me say, I tell you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear. All right? I'm, I am not ambiguous in what I do at all, at all. All right, so I'm putting that out there, and there's nothing inconspicuous about my words at all. All right, let's go to the next one, Tesla. Now, Tesla Tesla's starting to do a little rebound here. Another 3.8 exponential moving average. Boom. Volume is starting to rise. All right. Where did today's wick stop? Right at that level of resistance of 695.71. How many of you are trading it? If you're in it, leave it alone. RT just went above one. Stock's back in an uptrend. Um, if you're in it, leave it alone. If you're not, I would, I would really wait for it to get above this level of 713 personally. That then shows me I got some legs to the upside. All right, but listeners have to learn the trading language. Is that, yeah, I agree with you, Roger. I agree with you. When John says, if you send me a mug, I will agree with you. Sigh. Sigh. Voice emoji. All right, so that's what I see about Tesla. Woo, Shopify. So I did a video. Uh, we talked about it. Go ED. I talked about it in the Jockey Club this morning. It's supposed to be the Shopify in the U.S., all right. Right now, Shopify is moving a little sideways. Three and eight are still in place. Volume is pulling back a little bit. That makes sense if it's consolidating. RT still above one. I wouldn't worry about Shopify if I own it. I got nothing telling me to sell it. 
All right, right now it's just moving sideways. I'd like, if you're not in it though, I'd like to see it break above that high. If you're in it, leave it alone. A good way to think about getting out of it is a three and the eight cross negative. Um, Xenon, big move. I don't know if this was news driven or not. Uh, the three and the eight crossed right here on 621. Uh, RT followed the next day, uh, next couple of days to get above one. Watch it again. Shooting star, a lot of selling pressure on today's candle, even though it's open. A lot of selling pressure. Volume has been picking up. Look at that nicely above the average volume. If you own it, leave it alone. If you don't own it, I'd wait for it to break above that level of resistance in at 70 cents. This is truly a penny stock. Nice move. This could be because oil is moving back up again. Uh, the industry is moving, so the stocks within the industry are definitely pulling it higher. But I don't like the big selling pressure that you see on this candle right here. All right. So what company is the U.S. shop? Um, that was G-O-E-D. G-O-E-D. Um, real quick, we'll take a look. G-O-E-D. Yep. This is the new, this is the Shopify for, for United States. I just did a, a video. Uh, uh, we looked, uh, did I, uh, yeah, I did a video on it yesterday. Penny stocks to buy, uh, to consider, you know, buying. I just did a video on it yesterday. Just did a video on it yesterday. I like the layout. Downtrend broken, 3.8 crossed. I did like the layout. All right, let's finish looking at your stocks. I don't know if this was news driven or not. Just be careful with the selling pressure on today's candle. Uh, OKTA, Internet Software, bounced off support, 3.8 cross right about here. I like that. Look at that run up. What I am looking for right now, it's got some headwinds with at least a level of resistance right here of 248. Once it breaks above that, I got a profit target sitting at about ooh, 287. I like that. Our RT is about to cross above one. Not there yet, but very close. But I love these setups of bouncing off support, 3.8 cross. I can run a search that could find these stocks for you. If you don't have the software, 99 cents, 30 days, you can build the search finding stocks that have bounced off a recent level of support in the 3.8 cross. I can show you on the days where these stocks look like this, and you can make a decision. Something to think about. 99 cents. Trade desk. Nice update today. Very little selling pressure. Nice. Wonder if this is news driven. Let's go take a look. It's up 17% today. These four, na na na. Trade desk among ad tech stocks surging after Google delays phase out plans for cookies. Ah. All right. So it was news driven. Nice update today on a lot of volume. 30, 30 plus million, 32 million shares. Woo wee. Now, is that sustainable? I don't know yet. Um, it's news driven. Something tells me it's going to be a lot of profit taking because people went to sleep last night with the price at $65.39. And right now it's up another $10 from yesterday's close. I'm wondering if there's going to be profit taking on this tomorrow. I don't know if the news is going to be enough to sustain that stock. That's just my opinion. Zim. In the transportation ship industry, look at where the body stopped, right at that level of resistance of 47.21. Look at that. Intraday, it did hit a high, though, but look at the body coming back into the channel. That's why you always want to see a stock break out of the channel and close above the channel. Close above the channel. Good volume today. Good volume today, but be careful. Stock is still overall in a channel. Looking at Apple, Apple bounced off a level of support. Look at that. All right, uh, the 3A cross here on 6.7. Look at the stock's price run. Today is a down day. One day doesn't make, a, doesn't make a trend. But the stock's price is definitely running higher. I'm loving the idea that if you are a VectorVest subscriber, you can make a search. Finding stocks bouncing off support and, R, and 3 eights going above, 3 going above the 8. If you're not a subscriber, you can get that access for 99 cents. Don't forget to hit the like button. How many likes did we get today? 20. I want it 150. You guys don't 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 make me cry. I want 150 likes. I think that that's a fair thing, especially if you like the content, and especially if I'm tracking the stock that you wanted me to look at for you today. All right, so there you go. Um, oh, is off the hook girls doing bad stuff? All right, thank you, Joey. Joey, Joey's taking care of that. All right, let's go to the next one. Wow, Microsoft. Look at that. Bounce off support, 3A cross, 3A cross back again. Hammer formation, look at the 3A cross and look at the stock's price run. 
Look at the stock's price run. A little bit of indecision today, a little selling pressure, but a little bit of an indecision day today, hitting a new three-month high. I like the stock. I do like the stock. RT is above one. All right, last stock I got for you today, SRNE, biomedical. Bounce off support, 3.8 cross. Boom, look at that. Would that have been a good opportunity to take profit on that stock to the 3.8 cross down a couple of days later? A couple of days ago, the 3.8 cross, look at the stock's price. Nice open candle on good volume. Would like to see if the stock's price could take out that high if I'm not in it. If you are in it because you got on the 3.8 cross, you're fine. You're fine. All right, folks, that's it for today. That's it for today. That was a good, for me, a good first day back from um, Guatemala. Um, and again, for anybody who's still putting stocks in here that we did not uh, look at today, look down below the video. You will find a link for a free stock analysis. We There it is, free stock analysis. It just popped up in the chat. Click on that. You want a stock analysis on CTXR or Lou, you want a uh, stock analysis on SPCE, click that link that's in the chat. You can get that. Click that link in the chat. You can get your free stock analysis. Uh, the DEW is up. I didn't look at it today. I'm not going to look at it in here. Um, I will see, Steve will talk about that today if the DEW is up. All right. Um, Mark, thank you for the super chat today. How many likes did we get? 138? We're close enough. You guys didn't get me up to 150. It's all right. Um, but thank you for hitting the likes. We like the interaction nonetheless. John is still looking for a free mug. Did you send him a free mug? No. All right. John, I think that if you keep asking Joey, he'll send it to you. That's after you send me, uh, you want... Um, you want my thoughts, you're going to give my thoughts for one Bitcoin and I was going to sell you, Joey? I remember that. I like I'm that. Gonna and, you're going to, and he's going to bring a mug with him when, he, when I sell him. All right. Glad to have you back safe, Glenn. Thanks. Thank you, Roger. It was an amazing trip. It was definitely an amazing trip. Mike says, maybe my timing is bad, especially with ETFs, but I buy... And then the 3.8 crash frequently. Do you use something else to confirm or is it luck getting in? So for me, if you need more confirmation, if a stock is coming off of a bounce off support, 3.8, uh, maybe you will want to look for a more confirmation with um, um, a level of resistance, like here. Bouncing off, that would be my level of resistance. Look at that, bounce through. But you leave a lot of money on the table that way. Or if the 3.8 you feel is too fast, Make it like a 1020, whatever you want. Or just use a 20-day exponential moving average. Let me take off the 3 and the 8. How about just using the 20-day? You can do that as well. Um, hold on, let me make that a little darker for you to see. You can use a 20-day. All right, you can still look at the bounce. Instead of using the 3 and the 8, how about when the stock's price goes above the 20-day? Boom. How about that? That'll work for you too. All right? You guys are great. Also, please ask Angie to add T-S-O-I. Let me see if I can get that added for you. T-S-O-I to the database. Uh, I said explain in plain terms and you call that harass. No, I, that doesn't say anything about me. I explained everything that I do today. Uh, and I do every in any presentation. And like I said, ask the room. I'm very clear and concise about what I talk about. I try to talk to everybody in here as if they're brand new people because I got a lot of brand new people in here. So um, very clear and concise. And from that perspective, it does say a lot about me. Absolutely. And like I said, off the hook girls, ask the people in the room. Don't just listen to me. All right. Just don't, 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 don't just listen to me. Listen to the people in the room. They're the people who support us. All right, with that, folks, I'm getting ready to go. Um, like I said, this is the first live stream since I came back from Guatemala. The energy from you guys was there, absolutely. And again, thank you all for, um, for supporting the channel, especially this channel. This is the new live channel, all right? So with this, folks, adios, arrivederci, ciao, au revoir, sayonara, aloha to all my peeps in Hawaii. Uh, salam, shalom. Namaste. Yasu. See ya.